What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? Tuesday, December 2nd, 2025. All right, before we get into tonight's video, I want to offer one simple idea. Every one of us, no matter what we believe, is surrounded by narratives. Science has a narrative, conspiracy has a narrative, climate, politics, even the pole shift. Each one comes with its own lens, and most of the time, we don't even realize when that lens is shaping our view. In my work, I've spent years digging through every one of these narratives, only to find that all of them, every single one, are designed to pull our eyes away from the infrastructure that surrounds all of us, the facilities that actively shape our world. They'll quietly tell you that we're in the sixth mass extinction, but they'll never tell you the truth of what's driving it. Tonight, I'm going to lay out recent events and the timeline, and this isn't a one-off. We see these patterns every single time, observable, repeatable, event after event. These operations cannot be dismissed as coincidences any longer. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to start with a quote from Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden at a 2003 lecture. He says, if you heat the ionosphere in the right mode, you can entrain solar plasma processes. You can stimulate activity that would not have occurred naturally. In a loose sense, you can tickle the sun, perturb it, and get a response. And from a workshop in the late 1990s, Regarding scalar interferometry, he said with scalar interferometers, you can project energy into the solar plasma. A slight perturbation here can provide an enormous effect there. You can modulate the sun. This is the essence of scalar resonance. Over a four-day period at the end of November 2025, a clear sequence of events unfolded across the sun the ionosphere, and two of the most powerful scientific installations on Earth. In late November, CERN is fully operational. The collider is delivering stable beams, collecting data, and steadily increasing luminosity. CERN is running continuous physics operations, and while CERN is active, another facility is running as well. On November 28, 2025, IceGap runs ionospheric heating sessions, labeled in coupling. Later that same day, an M5.9 solar flare erupts from region 4294. The sequence is CERN is active, IceGap is active, and the sun unleashes an M5.9 solar flare. November 29, 2025, IceGap conducts another block of in coupling operations. During that window, an M2.9 solar flare fires from the northeastern limb of the sun. Sequence, CERN active, ISCAD active, M2.9 flare. November 30th, 2025, CERN continues stable beam operations. ISCAD continues ionospheric heating operations. At the same time, a powerful active region, the old 4274 group, rotates back into Earth's facing view. Right as it does, a C9.9 .9 flare pops up near the limb. Sequence, CERN active, ISCAD active, C9.9 .9 flare. Then comes December 1st. Shortly after midnight UTC, a Type II radio burst begins. The sun releases an X1.9 flare erupting from the returning region. A coronal mass ejection blasts outward, mostly angled away from Earth. The sequence, three days of CERN plus ISCAD activity, then the X1.9 solar flare erupts. Later that same day, ISCAT begins another heavy session, a stacked block of in-coupling operations running through the afternoon into the evening. At the same time, CERN continues full operation physics mode with all major experiments online and beams circulating. So here's the complete four-day chain exactly as it unfolded. CERN is already active before any major flare. ISCAT runs in coupling on November 28th, an M5.9 flare follows. 
Icecat runs again on November 29th in M2.9 flare follows. Icecat runs again on November 30th, a C9.9 flare follows. December 1st at 2.49, the sun fires an X1.9 solar flare. Later that same day, Icecat begins heating again. CERN continues at full operation. And before I wrap this up, there's one more piece I want to mention. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you already know I called out the exact moment the polar vortex weakened this season. Not a strengthening event, a sudden warming event, right when it shouldn't be happening. And just like every year, it happened in perfect coordination with these same facilities coming online, the same operational windows, the same signatures we see over and over again. This isn't new, and this isn't theoretical. This is a pattern I've been tracking publicly for years. The same pattern that shows up every single time these operations and upper atmosphere disturbances overlap. The solar events, the heating sessions, the collider runs, and the polar vortex weakening right on schedule. This channel exists because of you guys. Because you show up, because you share the videos, because you support the work. I'm not sponsored. I don't have brand deals, no corporate backing. It's just this community and the drive to keep documenting what's happening in our world. So, before anything else, I want to say thank you to all you guys who help support this work. And a huge shout out to Cat Bellman for buying me a coffee. Much love and many thanks. Okay, Sky Watchers. Stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.